Uh, welcome back, uh, Organic Chemistry 2, Chem 242. Uh, we are going to wrap up the carboxylic acids and derivatives discussion today, and we're going to have a little bit of practice problems. Uh, just like usual, I'm going to wait a few minutes to get started, let everybody get a chance to get logged in, and then I will timestamp the actual start time in the comments after the video gets converted. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get a link for everybody. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get a link for everybody. All right. We are live now, folks. Can anybody let, let me know in the, hang on, let me switch over. Okay, that's enough. So I got my, my next nerdy shirt out, so it's the elements of humor, sarcasm. <laughs> I do have a couple of nerdy science shirts that I wear. I usually wear this to lab. Can anybody, anybody in the Discord let me know if you're able to see me right now, please? Anybody in the Discord can let me know if you can see me? All right. So uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and get started. I want to I wanna do this. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to go over today. So I guess we'll go ahead and call this the official start time. So yeah, today we're going to be wrapping up the carboxylic acids and derivatives discussion. So today I wanted to, I did want to go over some more nomenclature. Uh, we didn't go over the um, acid halides and the amides yet. And then I want to go over the hell volard zielinski reaction. Um, we're going to go over hydrolysis of nitriles and cyanogroups, uh, polymerization reactions. Then I want to do a couple practice problems from these worksheets. Uh, these worksheets are on Canvas. Uh, I did post them as like Ormord's worksheets. You know, they're in there. And unfortunately, I didn't print them, so I'm going to be working them out on paper. So I don't have these printed. And I don't have a printer at home. So <laughs> we're going to have to make do. All right, so uh, let me just get my view set up here, and then I will start lecturing. All right, so there we go. There's that. Minimize. Uh, let me know in the chat if the lighting is okay. I'm, I tried like opening my window and I have a lamp like I can't see right there. There's a lamp to give me some more light, but I don't know. I'm not sure how it looks on your end. <clears throat> yeah, it's good. All right, cool. Yeah, thankfully, you know, Mother Nature is be behaving today and she's giving us some sunlight in the window. I actually prefer the sun from the window, giving plenty of light, but. All right, so uh, let's go over uh, some more nomenclature. And we are going to take a look at the acid halides. Yeah, she wants to tune in. She can. All right, uh, the naming on these is not very difficult. If you know how to name a carbo carboxylic acid, you're probably pretty good with these two. So... Uh, similar to a carboxylic acid. Uh, the main difference, in, in, uh, instead of using the oic acid ending, use oil halide. So use oil, and then you have a space, and then the, whatever halide it is ending. All right, uh, so for example, if we had like a four carbon this is a really simple one first. Tristan, Tristan, headphones, please. I can't find them. Well, you better figure it out. I don't want to hear anything from that from that tablet right now. It is not appropriate. Sorry, guys. He's trying to play something on his tablet. and It's making too much noise. All right. Uh, so uh, if you if you were to name this as an acid, you would call it a butanoic acid. Uh, so we would just call this a butanoil chloride uh, like that 
So pretty straightforward, uh, not too much different than what we're used to. Uh, I, I like doing a challenge problem too, just to make sure that we're getting all our practice in. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then let's go ahead and put a bromide over here. And then I'm gonna add some other groups on here just to make it a fun problem. Very Hammond style, right? <laughs> I would do this in my lecture too. I like doing challenging problems. All right, let's put that on there. And then uh, I wanted to add something else over here. So let's go ahead and put that on there. <clears throat> All right, uh, you guys know the drill. For you, uh, you start off by first identifying your uh, longest continuous carbon chain. Um, I, I made it pretty obvious in this one. It's just left to right. Uh, you do want to count uh, along the side branches though, just to make sure that you actually are getting the longest continuous branch or sorry, longest continuous carbon chain. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a octanoil. So uh, typically when I do naming problems, I like to just write out the parent first. So this is an octanoil bromide for the parent. And then uh, looking at our groups here, uh, do you guys remember what we call this kind of group when you have it at a branch? Does anybody remember? I think I briefly remember, mentioned it last semester, so you may not remember. Anybody? What do we call the CN group? Yep, it is cyano, correct. It is cyano. Uh, we, if, you're, if you're naming functional groups, you can call it a nitrile. Uh, but in naming, uh, you want to call it a cyano group. So uh, let, me, let me number my carbon so you guys are clear on what I'm talking about. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like at carbon four, we have a cyano group. And uh, we could do R and S on this. Uh, so uh, remember we need to go by first point of difference. So uh, going to this carbon, we have two bonds to O, uh, one bond to carbon. Uh, this carbon has three bonds to N. And then we have, so which, uh, which one do you think is priority, uh, towards carbon three or towards the cyano group? I'm doing pr uh, priority orders for uh, the chirality on carbon four. So once again, the question was, is the uh, first priority going towards carbon three or going down towards uh, the cyano group? Yeah, it's actually going towards carbon three. Uh, oftentimes, um, oxygens are tiebreakers. So I would, I would argue that this is priority, and it's going to go one, two, three. So it's going clockwise, but remember, we have an H coming towards us. So clockwise, it's actually backwards, so it's S. So 4S cyano. At carbon 5, we have an ethyl. And then, we'll come, and then at carbon 3, we have an oxo. So then we need to also do chirality on carbon five. So does anybody want to take a, a guess on whether this is R or S at carbon five? Okay. This one should be less challenging than one at carbon four. I think I see someone typing. I just come back when I'm done eating. So, yep, I believe it's R, so let me just double check. So it goes one. Two, one, two, three. So it's going like this. Once again, priority one is going to be towards carbon four. This is R. All right, and then I like, I like to rewrite the name, putting everything in alphabetical order. So it looks like it's going to go, I actually wrote it in alphabetical order already. It goes C, E, then O. So putting it all together, we have a 4S cyano. And remember, I mentioned last time that we, we, you can pull the R's and S's to the front if you want. Uh, embedding them in the name is fine too. And then three oxo octanoil bromide. Um, I do want to mention here that I like to put a little bit of a space between the parent and the branches, but technically uh, it's all one word. So you'll probably see that if you see it in writing on a quiz or something, then you'll probably see it that way. Let me adjust this. I think if I slide over that way a little bit, the lighting's better. Yeah, looks all right, I guess. <clears throat> 
You know what? I think I'm going to do the last time with no lamp. I think the lamp is actually making it too washed out. i got to get a different lamp up here. Um, aldehydes are, uh, so the question was uh, about aldehyde naming. Uh, aldehyde needs an al ending, A-L ending on the naming. Yeah, so uh, for example, if you have that, uh, this is propanal. Like that. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. I, wa I wanted to name amides also, so just make sure that we're getting our naming. Oop, something did something. Ah. <laughs> All right, so amide naming. All right, so for amides, uh, we use an an uh, the, the word amide for the ending. Use amide ending. Um, also, if you have any uh, carbon groups coming off the nitrogen atom, uh, we basically use the N as if it was a number. So uh, I like to call it use N numbering for this. Uh, so it's just, uh, and then usually with naming, I like to do a simple example to explain the rules, and then we do a hard problem to basically get practice. So uh, let's just do this. Yeah, let's do that one. Uh, so for uh, remember for name uh, for the naming here, uh, it's the same for all of the carboxylic acid derivatives. The side that has the carbonyl is the parent. So this is a uh, propanamide. Propanamide is the parent. And then to uh, denote that we have two ethyls on the nitrogen, it is a NN diethyl. So N comma N diethyl. So yeah, so this is what I mean by the end numbering. So once again, if you have any branches coming off of the nitrogen atom itself, we use N to denote the location. And you're going to see later on we go over amines. Amines are kind of the same way too. So yeah, end numbering is common for nitrogen compounds. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and do a practice. So And then let's go ahead and put something else here. Doing something crazy here. <laughs> That's going to be a crazy name here, I think. Let's do that. Uh, let's do an alkene in there, too, just for funsies. And then I think I'll put a halogen in there, too. All right, let's name this one. I think this is uh, plenty enough practice here. So I like to always start off with first identifying the parent and then giving the parent name and then going from there. So uh, remember the parent is the longest chain on the carbonyl side. Um, aldehydes are lower priority, so we name the aldehyde as the branch here. So yeah, aldehydes and ketones are lower priority than carboxylic acid derivatives. So um, I'm going to go ahead and number this way. One, two, three four, five, six, seven. So this is a heptene amid. Remember we have to put the ene as part of the parent also. So hept for seven. And then at carbon number three is where the alkene starts. Uh, but you, uh, I like to you know, throw a review in here. Is that an E or Z alkene that I'm showing here? That E or Z right here. Remember, you go by first point of difference. Anyone want to? You have a 50 50 chance to guess correctly. <laughs> yep, so uh, the, the priority, uh, so remember for E and Z designations, <clears throat> excuse me, for E and Z designations, you go by the first point of difference and you look at where the large groups are on each different carbon. And then uh, whichever one, like whichever side they land on, whether they're opposite from each other or same side of each other, uh, they end up being E or Z. So uh, priority on this car, uh, this side is the chlorine. Priority on this side is the carbon. And uh, something I tell my class, you usually remember this, is that 
if the groups are on Z Zane Zide, it's Z. So yeah, they're on Z Zane Zide. You haven't heard that one for a while, right? <laughs> so three Z Ean Amid. So there's our parent, Hept three Z Ean Amid. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do the branches now. So uh, do you guys remember what we call the group at carbon five, the aldehyde group? What do we call that when it's a branch? I don't think I covered that exactly, but it, it was in the IUPAC handout I gave you guys. I, I'm pretty sure Hammond covered it though. Yeah, so carbon five, what is that? What do I call that? <laughs> Sorry, I <Meadow. laughs> just laughed at your comment there. Uh, no, um, so you need to have an owl uh, if uh, if it's the parent, it's a, uh, nope, it is four mil. I think this might have been what you were confused about uh, earlier with the naming. It's it's this ill, not O-L. Yeah, so this is a four mil group. Uh, you can, nope, it is four mil. Uh, four mil is the official IU pack for this. Yeah, you, you only want to use O-L if you're talking about a, uh, acid uh, acid halide. If you're, if you're naming branch names, it's ill. Uh, form is for formaldehyde. Remember, uh, one carbon uh, aldehyde is formaldehyde. So this is a form, form ill group. And then for our, our R and S in this, it goes one, two, three, R. He called it a methanol oil. Yeah, it's, it's, if you actually look at the official IUPAC rule, it's showing it as form ill uh, for these groups. I've never heard of, I've never heard of methanol oil. <laughs> That's a new, new, new to me. All right, and then uh, don't forget, we also have a chlorine in there. So uh, four chloro. Yes. Yeah, guys, uh, just double check the rules on this, but yeah, it shows it as formal in, in, in the handout that I gave you guys, and that's from IUPAC. All right, uh, we, have, we have some more uh, Chem uh, 241 review in here. You guys know what these kind of branches are called? Like, what is that branch? What is this branch? We have two end branches. So uh, what are these branches called? Uh, I'm looking at the, the, at the nitrogen branches here. What do you guys think? That is correct, exactly correct. Yeah, it's an isobutyl and a secbutyl. So uh, this upper one is an isobutyl. He's a good kid, but he's and secondary butyl, attach a carbon to secbutyl. Uh, remember, typically when you have these uh, prefixes here, uh, we still go by this letter. These, this, these are actually the names of the groups, so we actually go by I and S on these. So I think the order is going to be what? C, F, I, then S. So I'm going to go ahead and put it all together now. So four chloro. Yes, and then F was five R, four mil. And then... Forget my alphabet here, yeah. So N isobutyl. Mm -hmm. I have room to write this name on here. It's kind of, it's kind of long. Um, N secbutyl. And then the parent, hept 3 Z Ean Amid. Whew, barely enough room for the page, yeah. Okay, the question was, uh, can you show the, the chiral priorities for 5 formal? Wait, wait. You know what, actually, I, I think I'm making a mistake on here. So we have what? I did rather ironic. So let me just, I'm going to draw out carbon 5 real quick. So we have, car, uh, going upward, we have a carbon with two bonds to O, one bond to H. Uh, over towards this side, we have two bonds to carbon, uh, one bond to Cl. And then... <clears throat> uh, going downward, we have C, C, H, H. Yeah, so this one's obviously priority three. Yes, I guess. So I'm actually thinking that um, this side has the higher total numbers. Yeah, so that actually changes our priority. So yeah, I think this is actually S, guys. Yeah, it's S. 
Remember, yeah, if you go by first point of difference, you just add these uh, atomic numbers together, and this ends up being a higher number here. Yep, so yeah, good call, Ben. You're right. Uh, this is going to be S. So let me just make a correction. I'm so disappointed in giving a soda. No soda. Soda's bad. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, that's, I think that's good for the naming. Uh, just make sure you practice those. I just, if you look at the notes that I have online, there are different examples uh, that you can work with. And I believe uh, Professor Hammond had some also that you can work on. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to go through is just uh, let's go through with some crazy reactions. You guys' favorite, right? So I wanted to go over the so-called HBZ reaction right now. So uh, the HBZ reaction is, it is short for Hal Bullhard Zelensky. People will often just call this HVZ reaction because it's li easier to say that. And it's funny because um, about three years ago now, I had a student, uh, my, my class is calling it the hell of a hard reaction. <laughs> and I still think of that when I see this reaction. Oh, it's the hell of a hard reaction. So now you guys are going to remember that. Hell of a hard. It's not hell of a hard, though, to be honest. It's actually not. It's actually application of a couple different reactions kind of happening all together. All right, uh, so the main uh, focus of the HBZ reactions is for the synthesis. So synthesis of alpha halo carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a, a, a propionoic acid for my example today. Okay, so you use the whatever acid. Uh, remember that I mentioned last time that uh, one carbon away from the carboxylic acid is called the alpha carbon, and then two away is beta, but alpha is the one of relevance here. So uh, that's why we're saying alpha halo. So our product is going to have a halogen there, like so. And then the reagents are X2, so whatever halogen you need, and phosphorus. And step two is a quench. So we're going to uh, we're going to quench with water here. I'm going to show you an alternative alternative quench uh, later on that gives you a different product. So uh, let's just go through the mechanism here. <clears throat> so uh, starting out with our acid, uh, the reagent I'm going to use here, uh, step one is phosphorus and Br2. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Hammond talked about this, but this is actually how you make phosphorus tribromide. Uh, you typically actually don't even, you don't purchase uh, PBR3 because it's unstable, it's very reactive. So these two mixing together is PBR3. So if you ever see that, that's basically what it is. And you guys should know this reaction already. I'm not doing the mechanism here, but that's basically how you convert OHs into bromines, right? Like that. Um, it turns out, though, that uh, this uh, specific reaction, uh, you definitely want to have some Br2 handy because it's needed. To, it's actually needed to get the halogen on there. Uh, so what happens here? Is a uh, bromine can then react. Um, but before, hang on, I'm, jump, I'm jumping ahead a little bit here. Uh, let me uh, fix this real quick. Sorry, I, I'm skipping a step that I wanted to I, I wanted to show to you guys. All right, so uh, what I'm going to show here is a ketoenol tautomerism. So uh, the short version of it here is is that this double bond moves down here, and then this H moves up there, essentially. I'll go into this more detail when we do the uh, stuff later. Um, but this is the equilibrium with the enol version. OH. And then I, I'm not going over the detail of this step here because uh, this is definitely enolate chemistry here that's happening. 
Um, but what ends up happening is this will react with Br2, and you'll end up with the product here. Well, almost the product. You get that. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you two different options for the quench. So uh, the first option I have here is water, and let's get the mechanism for it. So this is step two, is H2O. And then you, you guys should know what this does by now. It's going to do, uh, we don't need an acid catalyst here. It's going to do a nucleophilic attack onto the carbon. And I think I'm going to use red for arrows today. They, red seems to show up very well on the videos, so I'm going to use red for arrows. Yeah, I remember my class being really keen on purple uh, when I was teaching in class. So we get that. And we get our tetrahedral intermediate. Um, I would at this point show uh, some kind of a base. Probably bromine would do this or another water molecule. So I'm just going to use the water for this. It would very likely be a water molecule doing this during your quench. Oop, using red. Like that. And then we got our O minus. We have our OH. And then uh, basically reform your carbonyl. Oops, I was dropping my bromine. We still have a bromine over here, guys, that I forgot to write in. Here we go. And then this goes to the product. Like that. And then we now have our alpha bromo ku. <laughs> so ku. Okay, are there any questions on this mechanism so far? Any questions? Okay, I'll give you guys a second to ask if you have any, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. Wait, I see someone typing. <laughs> Come on, my wife roasting me? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> You, is she talking a mess in the background, not paying attention to you? She totally just did, didn't she? <laughs> What'd you say? I said it wasn't that funny the other day either. <laughs> yes, it was. They were laughing. They were probably laughing at me. <laughs> They're not laughing at me. I'm just going to say. All right, guys. So, um, so what can happen here? So in, instead of the water quench, you can do an alcohol quench. So I'm just going to use uh, ethanol for my example here. And does anybody want to take a guess on what's going to be different with this? Like, what's going to happen with this? So, uh, once again, the question was, instead of a water quench, I'm doing an alcohol quench, how will the product be different? Yep, that is exactly right. It'll make an ester instead. We saw last time that if you have a uh, acid halide with an alcohol, you get an ester. So that's what happens here. Um, you guys could practice the mechanism for this. I'm not going to do it here. Uh, it's kind of the same as what we just did. So uh, you could practice this on your own. So we're going to have an OET there, and then our bromine is still there. Okay. <clears throat> so then uh, what can happen? So, the, the, so these, the reason why this is even relevant is that these are extremely important. Uh, from, a from a synthesis point of view. Uh, they make some very important molecules at the end, and let me show that to you. So I'm going to go ahead and start from this one for the next part. Uh, the esters aren't as useful as the carboxylic acids are. So here we have our OH and our BR. And what we can do now is uh, we can react this with excess hydroxide. So I like to use that for excess, meaning there's a lot of it, and NaOH. And the first step here is going to be a deprotonation. 
Um, you guys may recall from last semester, if something can act as a base or a nucleophile, the base is easier to do. So uh, hydroxide is going to act as a base and nucleophile in this mechanism. So first it's acting as a base. So I'm going to write that here, acts as a base for your hydroxide. And then we get the deprotonated product here. And let's see who remembers their, uh, their 241 really well. What is the next mole equivalent going to do? I do want to point out that this carbon is no longer electrophilic. It's going to go somewhere else. So this is a 241 reaction that we need to do here. OCHEM 1 reaction. I'm seeing a lot of people typing. Resonance. <laughs> yeah, so remember, if, if you guess resonance, chances are you're right, but not in this case. It doesn't answer the question. Uh, so it's going to be an SN2. Yep, backside attack on the bromine. Exactly right. So uh, I'm going to write here acts as a nucleophile, and the reaction it's doing here is SN2. <clears throat> okay. Oops, that should be OH now. And then we have this. So this would be uh, technically a step three if you're following like a reaction sequence. And then your step four would be another quench with H plus. And then what this does is it is acid base to get to get the neutral product. So let's draw that. Okay, uh, this particular compound is now called an alpha hydroxy carboxylic acid. So alpha hydroxy Ku. <laughs> I, I would say I'll, I'll laugh every time I say that word. It's so cool. All right, um, next part that happens, so there's the fifth step in the reaction, then we're done. So step five is excess ammonia, like that. And then we get NH alpha amino carboxylic acid. Did I freeze again? Hey, anybody, anybody besides, uh, yeah, let me know if you guys are seeing me still. I don't want to keep talking if you guys aren't seeing me. Back now? Okay. All right, so uh, recapping here. So uh, after the acid base thing here, uh, we have the alpha hydroxy carboxylic acid. And then with excess ammonia, uh, this converts to an alpha amino carboxylic acid. And I would probably argue this might be like an SN2 uh, happening here, likely. Or uh, it could be SN1 also, or secondary here. It could be SN1. Not too worried about it right now, though. Um, but the, anyway, um, does anybody recognize what kind of compound this is? Maybe from a, a, another class? Like, what kind of compound is this? Uh, it's biologically significant. This is a biologically significant compound. Uh, anyway, um, people don't typically call these this. Uh, what we like to do is, yep, it is an uh, amino acid. Uh, we actually specifically made alanine. So we made alanine. Uh, so uh, w this is basically how we make amino acids uh, in the lab. <laughs> I, I do, I do want to mention that these, uh, these particular uh, uh, amino acids, they are chiral, and only one of them is biologically active. I'll go over that in more detail during the amino acid chapter. Um, but you would end up with uh, probably half of the version that was biologically active, half that wasn't, if it was SN, SN1. 
So um, they, people would probably do this to favor SN2 conditions because that way you get one uh, enantiomer product, which you probably want the biologically active one. Um, I, I mentioned last time with carbohydrates, I just mentioned it here too, uh, that the D enantiomers are typically the biologically active ones. It works with, carb with amino acids, the L version is typically the active one. Uh, so um, all you need to do to make an amino acid is a, yep, amino acid. So change which acid uh, to start with to make different amino acids. And uh, going back to the original, uh, where did I put it? <clears throat> So uh, basically, to choose which amino acid you need, uh, this is your R group. So uh, whatever is the whatever beta is and on, that is your R group for your amino acid uh, in the total synthesis here. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn the Wi-Fi off my phone. Yeah, I'm gonna stop for a second. Um, we're filling with Wi-Fi. I actually ordered a 30-foot coax. Uh, so the problem is there's, there's too many people on my network right now, and I'm on my Wi-Fi because my computer set up is not close enough to my router to physically like to to plug in. So we're on the Wi-Fi, unfortunately. Yeah, can you turn the Wi-Fi off on that too? Let me turn the let me turn the Wi-Fi off my switch too. Hang on. Yeah, we're turning off the Wi-Fi on every device in my house right now. So I got my switch here. I was, I was playing The Witcher, Witcher 3. Anyway, let me turn the Wi-Fi off this. Sorry. I, um, yeah, all, all of our devices are off now, guys. It should be better. All right, so uh, next thing I wanted to go over now is, uh, wait, well, before I move on, uh, did you guys have any questions about this before I continue? I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the next reactions now. I'll give you guys a second for the stream to get caught up and for you guys to uh, ask any questions if you have them. Any questions? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and continue if no one has any questions. Oh, I'm seeing some people typing. Uh, you need to know the mechanisms, mechanism for the parts that I showed, and by the time we get to exam day, you guys should be okay with everything in here. Uh, I skipped the enolate part in the, in the mechanism, so you guys should be okay by the time we get to exam day. All right, uh, the next thing I want to go over here is hydrolysis. of nitriles. Uh, the reason why it's probably blurry is because my stream might be still catching up. Typically when you when it originally reloads it back in, it is blurry. It, it usually catches up and gets clear again. Uh, just to let you guys know, I am broadcasting at 1080p and 60 frames a second. So it should be clean like after it actually goes live. So if it's too bad for you guys, just go ahead and just cut the stream and just catch it on later after it posts. It, it's actually a lot better if you catch it later. Better, much better quality. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and get this started. So uh, remember that the word hydrolysis means a water split reaction. So water split reaction. Uh, you will oftentimes start off with a larger molecule and make something smaller out of it. It's typically the case. So uh, I want to go over, over the uh, mechanism for acid conditions. So acidic conditions. Like that. <clears throat> so uh, the particular example I'm going to start with is this compound. Uh, this one is actually important in the organic chemistry lab. This is actually a really common solvent. Uh, this is acetonitrile. 
acetonitrile. So uh, I, wa I wanted to clarify how the naming is happening here. So you can imagine if this was a carbonyl, that would be like an acetate. So uh, because we have the two carbons here, we call it aceto. So don't call this methyl. It is aceto for two carbons. All right. Um, I do want to mention here that these, these reactions are all equilibrium, but I'm going to do one-way arrows for the sake of time. But these are all equilibrium. This is a two-way reaction. So the first step is to protonate like that. The formal charge on nitrogen is now plus one. Uh, this is actually equivalent to an activated carbonyl that we saw earlier. So uh, this is a, this carbon is electrophilic. So E plus carbon. So uh, then what we can show happening here is uh, a water can come in. Oops. Um, I just, uh, before I show the water coming in, I, I just want to emphasize the fact that this is like a carbonyl, the way that it reacts, uh, because you can show resonance here. So there's resonance. So that's, remember, resonance arrow. Yeah, so it's uh, similar to a carbonyl. Okay, uh, so when you show the next step here, you can show it attacking either this one or this one. Uh, just if you have it attack this one, you have to have the second arrow to go with it. Where if you have it attack this one, it just, there's no second arrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and show it attacking the right one just for the sake of convenience for the drawing. But you, remember, you could show it attack that one instead. That. So what do we have here? We have uh, H3C. We have our double bond NH. Have a lone pair. And then we have that. And then don't forget we have a plus charge on the oxygen. All right, uh, the next step I'm gonna show here is a uh, intermolecular proton transfer. You guys love those now? They're like, they're like in every mechanism now. So, uh, that. So uh, here, remember we use this, the swooshy arrow for showing that. That plus and then OH. Hang on, I think I saw a question in the chat. Nope. Okay, never mind. All right. Um, at this point, we're basically going to make our we're going to make a carbonyl now. So we uh, we go ahead and form a carbonyl like that, and then this goes like that. I did turn the molecule a little bit to make it look more normal at this point, uh, but that's how it goes. We, ba we basically have an amide now. So I want to point out this is a protonated amide. Hi, Tristan. Do you always like saying hi during the video? Yeah, I know. He wants to be YouTube famous one day, right? YouTube famous. All right, um, we actually did this mechanism last time for the remainder of this. Uh, so this is basically your protonated amide. And if you actually compare these notes to the old notes from last time, the rest is actually the same thing. But I, I just want to go ahead and do it here so we have it all in one, one place. But the remainder here is was the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of an amide, is the, the re remainder of this. So uh, we're going to go ahead and have another water molecule come in like that. And then what do we we have an, another tetrahedral intermediate? Uh, 
like that. Uh, like so. Um, here I'm going to do another uh, intermolecular proton transfer. So it's going to go to the nitrogen this time. Like so. We now have a good leaving group in the ammonia. So uh, just pick one of the oxygens here to uh, make a carbonyl and then kick that out. And then what we have here, we have double bond OH plus and then OH. And then you can use the leaving group that just left to uh, deprotonate with. So NH3 and then deprotonate. And then let me raise that up a little bit. So remember, if, you're, if you are in acidic conditions, you want things protonated. If you're in basic conditions, you want things deprotonated. Uh, because we are in acid conditions, everything needs to be protonated. So we have the protonated, uh, protonated acid, and then we're going to have our protonated um, ammonia, which is ammonium ion, like that. And then we're done. So, yeah, I can't put the whole thing on there at once. That. There we go. <laughs> And let me just make myself a little bit smaller. There we go. There's the whole thing. Are there any questions about the uh, hydrolysis of a nitrile? All right. So uh, there we go. Um, I, I do want to mention under uh, basic conditions. Uh, these have a similar mechanism. And then I want you guys to try this. Try this one. Uh, so I'll give you guys any, uh, a practice problem to work with. So what if we have like a phenyl like that. And then you have excess NaOH. This is going to be aqueous. Uh, your products are going to be their carboxylate. Remember, deprotonated now. And then you're going to have ammonia gas. Uh, this is actually uh, in the lab. So this is in the lab manual. Actually, I have the lab manual right here. Let me just pull it up here real quick to show you guys that we were going to be doing this one. This is actually one of the ones that I like. <laughs> this lab. This is actually a pretty cool lab. Um... Where is it? Page 139 in the lab manual. So I'm looking at this lab manual. I also do want to mention to you guys, when I, when I wrote this lab manual, I, I literally converted my lecture notes into the, the introductions. So you guys already have my lecture notes here. Yeah, I told you guys to try it, but here's the answer. So uh, try it on your own and then come back here to check your answer. And yeah, it's experiment 4.5.3. And there was a setup. So, oh well. It is what it is. Such are the times we live in. All right, um, I have one more reaction type to go, and then we're done with this chapter. Yay! One more reaction. This next one's actually kind of cool, kind of cool, though. <laughs> Are you rolling your eyes over there at me? Huh? Oh, I, I, I thought you were rolling your eyes at me for saying something with coup. Uh, no, actually, I was honest. <laughs> so, <I'm not. laughs> all right. So uh, the last reaction I want to go over, then we'll do some, we'll do a few practice problems, and then I'll cut the stream. Um, but we are doing polymerization reactions. So uh, if you if you remember, uh, you uh, you may have covered polymerization in 241 with alkenes. Uh, the short version of what a, pl a polymerization reaction is is when you have uh, many small units making big units. Uh, so the one that we're going to be working with here is uh, we're going to we need a di acid and a diol to start with. So I'm going to use this di acid. 
And then I have a die all. So die acid, die all. Uh, this typically requires an H plus catalyst in heat. So acid catalyst in heat. And then um, uh, whenever you're practicing polymerization reactions, uh, you, you, you might have a hard time predicting the product from just that. So I like to do it a piece at a time until I see what's repeating. So if you think about it, uh, we have an alcohol, we have an acid. These are going to do an acyl substitution. So acyl frustrating. frustration. It might, let me know when I'm live, please. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing offline too. May need to catch this after. Yeah, if you guys want to reload it after, after it posts the video, it's usually a lot better. Uh, basically, all these drops are removed when it goes to, when it goes to the full conversion. All right, so uh, uh, going over this again. So we have a diacid and a diol. Uh, these are going to undergo an acyl substitution. And then what will happen here is like, so here we have the substitution with an alcohol and acid combining. And then it's going to happen again. So next, the next piece to add on is an acid. Uh, typically, when you're doing polymerization reactions, after you have like two units on there, you can kind of start picking out what's repeating about it. So uh, this is going to basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, losing a water. This is an acyl substitution. So it's, uh, basically, if you, if you look at the esterification mechanism, that's what's happening here. This is esterification. We're getting esters. Uh, anyway, uh, this is going to keep going and going and going and, until all until uh, one of these is gone, and then the reaction stops. Um, but what we need to do for our product here is use brackets and recognize what is repeating. So right here we see that uh, basically this is going to loop around. So like this, this oxygen is going to be bonded to over here, and then repeats over and over and over. So the repeating unit is our acid piece oxygen, carbon to oxygen, and then like that. And then N. So this is a polymer. So what, uh, the way we read these kind of drawings with the brackets is this unit is repeating over and over and over and over. So this is how it repeats. So we have these groups, and then this oxygen is bonded to the next unit on this carbon, and just over and over and over. Uh, because of the fact that this is an ester, and we and it's many of them poly, you guys have probably heard this word before. This is a polyester. So this is how clothing is made, right? So yeah, we we now have a polyester. All right. Um, the next the next one I want to show you guys here too. It's, it's a very very similar. Um, we're just going to have a different starting uh, starting point. So. Another, I was gonna do that example down here. So let's say this one is one, two, three, four, OH. So I'm just changing the structure a little bit just to make sure we're getting different examples. And then this one is gonna be, let's just do a, a one carbon thing here. So on this one here, we're gonna use a diacid and a diamine. So this is going to make an amide, right? So remember, uh, carboxylic acid plus an amine makes an amide. Uh, we do need a catalyst here. H plus and heat is required to get this to occur. And it's going to make the same kind of product as this one, but instead of esters, it's going to be amides. So repeating unit is going to be this piece, so carbonyl. We have the two carbons in the middle. Next carbonyl, our first amide, second nitrogen, and then end of repeat, repeating unit. So that's going to be the repeating unit, like that. Um, this kind of compound is referred to as a polyamide. Uh, but these ones actually have a common name. Uh, we, these are commonly called nylon. Yeah, poly, uh, nylons are polyamides. So 
Yeah, so we, are, we, know, we now know how to make polyester and nylon. And if you want to make cotton, you go to the sheep and, and share it off the sheep instead. We don't make that stuff. We just get it from the animals. Um, you don't get cotton off of the sheep either. Where do you get it then? Off of a plant. Oh, it might have plant. I'm thinking of something else. My bad. You're thinking of wool. I'm thinking of wool. Yeah. See, I've got to have, have my fact checker in the room. Yeah, so cotton comes from the plant, wool comes from the sheep. All right, so the question was uh, your uh, confusion about what goes in the bracket. Uh, what goes in the bracket is what is repeating. So let me just uh, backpedal just a little bit to make sure you guys are all understanding this. So on this, uh, remember we have the ASO substitution happening here. So I'm showing you it happening once. And then so at this point we have an alcohol. Another acid can come in. That's here. The acid came in. And then it keeps cycling through that over and over and over. So... Uh, the key here is recognizing the repeating pattern. It's basically our acid, our alcohol. And then here it's our acid and our amine. And uh, don't forget the N here. The N here is saying it's repeating. All right, so um, that's pretty much it for the chapter. I did want to do some practice, so we're not cutting the stream just yet. I'm thinking maybe 10, 15 minutes though, so not much longer on the stream. Um, I just wanted to pick out some problems from the worksheet. So uh, let me switch over to the file view. So file full. Oops, those were my notes I was just looking at. Um, these are on Canvas too, guys, by the way. And I, and I changed the example for this one just a little bit. So we had a different problem to work with. But same deal. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same. All right, so let me um, full screen this. There we go. Actually, let me... Um, Hang on, let me alter the view here. Let's do the file multi-view. And then I can minimize this and still have it in the window. All right, so minimize or zoom out. All right, so uh, I want to go ahead and take a look at this activity sheet here. Um, you guys should have this on Canvas, like I mentioned earlier. So um, I just want to go ahead and work through a couple of these guys. Uh, these are all kind of like jumbled review for the, all the carbonyl stuff. So they're all kind of mixed in together. Uh, where did my pencils go? All right. So uh, I just want to work through the first one here. So I'm going to write uh, right here. I want to work through that one. I hope you guys are able to see this OK. Uh, actually, let me, let me change the ratio on these. Oops. Make this a little smaller. That's not working. And then we'll make this one bigger. Like that. Make this a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, so I, I want to work with the first problem there. So we have that. And then uh, looking at the first step there, uh, that is, a, so we're losing a bond to O, that is a reduction. Uh, this can be NaBH4 or LaH. So sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride does the reduction. And then bringing it back. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is an oxidation now. We're bringing it back to the start. This is just to make sure you remember, remember your uh, carbonyl reduction oxidation. So this could be uh, Jones or PCC. Uh, basically, uh, chromium-6 is what's needed here. And then uh, for this part, we need hydrides. Hydrides work for that one. So uh, just to make sure you guys are all understanding the chemistry here, that is reduction. This is oxidation. All right, uh, the next one there is the same compound but reacting with uh, MCPBA. So we're going to get the uh, oxygen inserted on the more substituted side, like that. Uh, the next question, same compound again, but we're instead reacting with the diol. Uh, we are going to get an, a cyclic acetal for this one, a protecting group, essentially. <coughs> hey, uh, let me ask you guys a question. Did, did, did Professor Hammond go over uh, acetal as protecting groups for synthesis problems? So uh, these are protecting groups. Uh, I I'm wondering if you went over this as protecting group. I could do one today if you didn't.
Yep. So once again, the question was, did Professor Hammond's class go over uh, cyclic acetals as protecting groups? I mean, you guys are typing, so I'll, I'll continue while we're doing that. Um, and okay. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he did. This is the hand we're talking about here. I'm pretty sure he did. Okay, okay, good. All right, uh, the next one was intended to be kind of a trick question here. Uh, we have a Grignard. Uh, remember, uh, Grignards are uh, very strong nucleophiles, but they're also very strong bases. So if you have an acidic H around, it pretty much kills your, kills your Grignard. You're just going to get an acid base here. So acid base reaction, you want to avoid acidic H's with Grignards. So you're just going to deprotonate here. So we get pH, you know, uh, benzoate we get here, and then you're going to get ethane. So acid-base reaction. Uh, this is very favored because if you remember your pKa's, the pKa of this is about, what, 4 to 5? The pKa of this is about 50? It's very much going that way. So this is definitely a uh, product's favored here if you're looking at pKa's. All right, uh, moving along here. Uh, this one here, I uh, do the mechanism. Uh, I'll leave that to you guys. Uh, do the mechanism for that. Um, these are more practice problem types here for predicting products. I want to do more of the challenging ones um, for you guys to have good practice. Um, this one says here, uh, how could you use one bromobutane to prepare each of the following carboxylic acids? Uh, so I just want to go ahead and work through the, uh, these sets here. I'm actually going to zoom in this view here. Since we don't need... Or, oh, maybe too big now. Make myself smaller. Go back. Right, that works. All right, so uh, we're going to basically make um, from our starting point here is one bromobutane. One, two, three, four bromo. And then we're going to make uh, first is propanoic acid. That is a three carbon. So uh, this is going to be uh, A here first. All right, so the first thing I'm recognizing is our target has one less carbon than what we actually need. So I'm, gonna, I'm thinking here we're going to do elimination followed by um, oxidative cleavage. So uh, let's go ahead and do the elimination step here. Uh, this can be uh, LDA. Um, Hammond's class may have not covered this one yet. I actually covered this, this reagent in 241. Um, but you basically a bulky base is what I'm using here. This is an E2 mechanism. So this problem actually is basically from 241. And then uh, the second step here is going to be ozonolysis followed by oxidative conditions for the quench. So it's going to be H2O2 and sodium hydroxide for that one. And then we get our propionoic acid. All right, uh, B wants you to make butanoic acid. So butanoic acid. So for B, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so uh, we do have the correct number of carbons. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just do NaOH. Uh, this is going to be an SN2, SN2, and then we get our OH on there, like that, and then Jones, and then you're done. All right, and uh, next one there is pentanoic. You need to add a carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and same starting point, make C. All right, uh, since I want to add an extra carbon, uh, we did see a way to make carboxylic acids while extending the, extending the carbon chain by one carbon. Uh, that's basically turn this to a Grignard and then do the CO2 reaction. So Mg and ether to make the Grignard, MgBr, 
and then here we go CO2 plus H2O quench and then this one is now done like so and then the next one there I want to do it extend the carbon by two so extend it by two carbons now so uh, let's just go with D so once again I need to extend the carbon by a chain by two so I'm actually going to start with this point here and then I'm going to do one of the reactions you guys may have forgotten about uh, the epoxide reaction so step one will be that step two will just be a quench with water and then if you think about it we're going to extend this carbon chain by two carbons now so one two three four five six OH and then Jones to finish it so one two three four five six and then we are done yay All right, there we go are there any questions on this problem? Hi, Tristan. Mm. Actually, uh, some of the other ones in here are better, I think. So let's do this one. Let me scroll this over so I can see better. Um, I wanted to work on a synthesis problem in here somewhere. Actually, I want to do this page. Um, but before I start that, do you guys have any questions about anything? Let me make this a little bit smaller. You don't need that whole thing, the whole page. All right, so uh, uh, this is in the, actually the next activity pack. This is from 4.2. It's about halfway down or roughly or so in there. So I just want to go ahead and do all these. I used to have a problem like, uh, I, I know Hammond has problems like this in every test. Um, I typically do also when we get to this portion of the class where I have you guys uh, basically fill in all the blanks. All right, so uh, the first reaction there, and if I was doing this in class, I would be yelling out, what reagent, what reagent, what reagent? This is like flashcard type stuff here now. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go through it for the sake of time um, without waiting because I, I, want, I do, I do want to wrap this up. So uh, we get PCC, does that. And then the next step here, we're trying to make the uh, anhydride. So one, two, three. So we're basically subbing out bromine for the acetate group. So this is acetate, sodium acetate. Nacho, right? Nacho? <laughs> She's rolling her eyes at me now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a nerd in the classroom too. This is not a special special occasion. I'm always like this. They like my nerdiness. Do you guys appreciate my nerdiness? It feels like you guys, it feels like you do when we're in class. It really does. So let me know if you appreciate my nerdiness and should I keep it up? All right, uh, next one here, uh, you just need, you just need uh, the corresponding amine. So it's just a dimethyl amine is all you need here. And we're good. And then the next one here is uh, going upward on this flow chart. So uh, we want to basically make an ester now. So just whatever alcohol you need. So it looks like methanol is the one needed for that one. Like that, and then uh, the next re uh, this next one was a review reaction. Uh, this is actually covered in the alcohol chapter. So if you're looking uh, for your notes, uh, this is a, this should be in the alcohol chapter. Wait, like start of the semester. That was this was a while ago. So ethyl magnesium bromide uh, followed by water quench. Uh, remember, so uh, <clears throat> I, like I said, go back in your notes and remember. But what happens here is the first. Uh, you will make a ketone and then you make a tertiary alcohol. 
Uh, this group is going to add on there twice. So we're going to get, uh, this is our, our original ethyl, or uh, original carbon piece. And then we get ethyl, ethyl, OH. He's like, yo. <laughs> yo. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the, to go back from here, that's uh, the last one there, to go back. Uh, this was basically uh, saponification. That's step one. And if you remember, saponification ended with you getting the carboxylate. So to get it back to the protonated version, uh, I mentioned an H+. Plus. Yeah, so I was just told that my, nerd my nerdiness is appreciated. So don't judge me. <laughs> I don't judge you, obviously. I married you. So you, you, mar you marry the dork. Just remember you married the dork. I know. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to do this one also. Uh, hang on. Let me get the scrolling right. There we go. Okay. So uh, this particular one has you guys uh, basically... Actually, let me change the view on this make it a little bit better. So presenter camera. And then I had a setup for that. So uh, this is the problem that I want to work on, guys. So we're going to be starting with that particular compound and then just predicting products. So uh, let me just go ahead and predict the products here. I think I should have enough room over here to do that. So for the first one, uh, you're basically going to pop that ring open and you're going to get a diacid from this. Like that, so that's the first one. Uh, the second one we did last time, that was the imid reaction. You're going to basically uh, substitute out uh, oxygen for nitrogen. So we're going to get N, and then this one uh, can have a methyl group on there. So CH3, like so. Uh, the next one is a little bit tricky. Um, what's going to happen here is you're going to get uh, an anhydride for part of it. So uh, let's go ahead and draw this out. And there is the product for the third one, like that. All right, uh, any questions on the, uh, these reactions so far? Remember, you can always stop me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask questions. I love questions. It slows me down a little. I know I go fast. Yeah, this one's asking you to draw a mechanism for the next one. And then uh, the, this last page is enolates. We, we haven't covered this yet. This is next week. So don't worry about this one. That's next week. You could do part A, though. Part A would just be Jones. Oh, wait. Sorry. Jones and esterification would be this one. Yeah, the, uh, the part for next week is actually the, the second part down here is uh, enolate stuff. To, get, to, go, to go from here to here is enolates. I think I see someone typing, maybe a question. Um, you know, I'm, think, I'm actually leaning towards doing a quiz per topic. So like having an acid quiz, having an enolate quiz, having a carbohydrate quiz, uh, I think that's probably better because then I can ask a little bit more questions and then they're kind of spaced out a little. So you're not getting like this crazy like 30 question quiz. And I want to be able to ask a lot of questions on quizzes to get you guys ready for exams. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to touch base with Professor Hammond about it, but I'm leaning towards doing a, a, a quiz for every topic to make it a little bit spread out. Uh, let me just uh, skim through this again, see if I want to work on any other ones before cutting the stream. And you've got the chance to answer any questions that you may have. Yeah, this is all, this is all enolate stuff. Enolates, enolates. And then there's some nomenclature practice for you guys. I'll let you guys do those ones. All right. So uh, I'm actually thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut the stream now, guys. We've been, I've been on here for like 80 minutes already. So I started at 1. So yeah, it's 2 2.20 now. So... Uh, I'll give you guys a, a, you know, a quick second to ask, ask any uh, last minute questions before we go enjoy our weekends. Hey, when I say enjoying our weekends, am I, am I holding true to my shirt, being sarcastic? 
You're going to be all stuck at home on the weekends, no going to the bar, no going to the club. <laughs> All right, no problem. Um, yeah, everybody, uh, please stay safe this weekend. I'm, I'm going to keep saying this, guys. I know it's broken record, but please stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, be healthy. Be clean. And uh, try your best to stay away from large groups. What hand sanitizer on your hands, too? Uh, the, the lab is up. Yes, the lab is up already. I posted it yesterday. Did you have a question, Tristan? What was your question? You said everybody used hand sanitizer too. Come here. Come here, Tristan. Don't yell. Don't yell, because it, it, it sounds bad when you yell. Come here. Come here. Come here. Tell them. Just say it. Don't, don't yell it. Put hand sanitizer on your hands, you do. Do you guys hear that? Use hand sanitizer. Be safe and clean, right? Oop. Clean hands. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the stream here. I will, like usual, I'll, I'll hang out in the Discord chat for a few minutes. And if you guys have uh, any questions, you uh, feel free to ask them. So, yep, on that note, stay cool. <laughs>